In this video, I'm going to show you some of the features of Cursor Tab and how you can use this within a file to quickly have code completion, uh, edits, generation of uh, functions and, and mock data and stuff like that. Uh, if you've ever used GitHub Copilot, uh, it's, it's pretty much GitHub Copilot on steroids. It, it used to be called Copilot++ and it really does feel like a massive iteration on, on Copilot. I remember when Copilot first came out, it blew my mind just how good it was that you could just start typing and it would suggest the, how to complete the function. You could just type a comment and it would create a function based on that. And it feels like that, but it's so much more. It's so much more powerful now. You can, you can do partial. You can accept partial completion. You can do multi-line edits. You can do all kinds of, of different stuff where it edits. It doesn't just predict it. It also tells you where the cursor, where it thinks you need the cursor to go to then edit the HTML or edit, edit the code to add in these new features. So I've built a little to-do list app here with uh, Laravel Livewire Vault. Vault is relatively new. I don't know anything about it. That's why I'm, I'm using it. I want to show that you can use cursor to, to build things in unfamiliar languages. And this is the first time that I'm really looking at it. I had a quick browse to the docs before I did the video, but and a few people that I, I follow on Twitter and stuff have been using this quite a lot. So I thought I'd give it a shot. So we have this sort of blank component here, which is what you get when you set it up. So we've got nothing there at the minute, just this double forward slash. What I want to do is I can see that it's passing in this function, the state. Now I don't know much, but I know that the state is probably going to be like a sort of an object that keeps the PHP part of this code in sync with the view part, which is the div down here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is add some to do's to this state. So I'm going to do add a list of to do's to the state. And if I hit tab, you can see that's given me this gray text. This gray text is, is a prediction. It's a code generation. It's what, it's what cursor thinks based on what I've typed and based on the file name of what I want to do. So it's given me three to do items, buy groceries, finish a project and call mum. And to be fair, I probably should call my mum. It has been a while actually. Uh, and if you hit tab, it would just add it. Now notice what happened when I hit tab, this pop-up came, it's like a, a diff. So it's suggesting that I remove the forward slashes and replace it with a, a for each loop instead. So what I wanna do is if I hit tab, it will jump the cursor down to where it needs to be in the page. If I hit tab again, it will add that loop. Save it, switch over, and we've got a list, a to-do list. Okay, not much, nothing exciting going on here, but it's there. So if we head back, now we probably need to have some extra things in here. We probably want to be able to add a to-do list item. And we also want to, when we've checked one of them, probably like toggle it so there's like a line through it saying that this, this to-do has been done so we don't, just like a visual way to, to sort of like feel good about ourselves for calling our mom or buying some groceries. So we're going to need within this state, we're going to need a sort of new, and again, all I've done is put one comma. <laughs> and this is what, this is what blows my mind. You just put a comma and it's, it knows that I'm going to want to add a new to do. So I tab it. Okay. So now we've got a new to do. It's just, we need to, oh, what have I done? We need to add a function, which is doing function add to do this dot to do's. Okay, this new to do, tab that. Remove, I'm going to add it. Okay, but I don't really want to do remove right now. I really want to do, and actually, I think from reading the docs, I don't necessarily think I want to do this because I think with Laravel Vault, we can just do it as like a add to do. So you do it as like a assignment operator. Okay, remove to do. Now it's trying to tab me over here to add a remove button. Okay, so let's let's go back and see. I've got an undefined variable index here. So we're passing an index which doesn't exist. So I need to have a little look here. Uh, we need to change this for each, oh, it's trying to add a form. Okay, so look, I've just added, I've just literally gone onto the line and it's now suggesting that I edit that as an index 
And then if I save that and head back over, um, now we've got, we can remove all the to-dos. Great. So the next thing we probably want to do now that that's working, we've got, oh, did I test add to-do? Uh, let's refresh that. Oh, I didn't actually put a form. It, that's what it was trying to do, and I ignored it. I apologize, cursor. We need to add a form here. <clears throat> and again, it just knows. I mean, it did try and do it a minute ago, and I, I, I refused it. So it's literally added us a text input, and it's a wire model, which is binding the value of this input to a new to-do in the state here. And then when we submit it, it's going to call this add to-do function. So what it will do is... We'll take the to-do item, we'll add it to the list, and then wipe new to-do so we can use it again. Makes sense. So we'll save that. Tab back over to here. And then you can't actually see the input because there's no styling. So we maybe do call dad. Maybe dad wants a phone call. And then we hit enter, and it's there. Okay. And we can remove them. Everything's working pretty beautifully. So let's go back to cursor. Uh, what I want to do as well is do a toggle function. Um, toggle to do. Okay, so it's going to do that. Now it's going to make me tab over here, but it hasn't suggested what I need to do. And this is something you'll find that it doesn't always fire out right when you think it does. It, it becomes quite an intuitive thing with, with a cursor tab that you just have to figure it out. So if I just put an enter here, if you look in the diff, it's shoved it all the way over here, but it's trying to, it wants me to add wire click to toggle this. So it's got it's bound the model, but now when we click it, it wants to do something. So if I hit tab, it's gonna fire this toggle to do function. So we'll head back. So now, well, it doesn't actually do anything to be fair. I think what we need to do actually is be able to show visually when it's, oh, hold on. It tried to do something then and I think I, I think I wiped it. So what we need to do really is when it's toggled, we actually want to show a line through. So let's go, I'm gonna close that. It's this span here, right? Uh, if I just tab there, a uh, space there, sorry, it's gonna say if the to-do is completed, stick a line through it. Okay, and we can see that finished project is already done. And then if we click another one, it will. And then if we unclick them, it removes it. Okay. So what if we wanted to set a priority? Uh, it's a common thing with a to-do. Sometimes you wanna have like certain priorities. So if I tab here, so it's suggesting that I do an ID, but I don't want to do an ID. I want to do a uh, priority. Now I can hit tab and select all of this, or I can actually hit command Okay, and if I hit command and hold it while pressing the right arrow, I can select partial completion, which is great because I don't want this to necessarily be low. I want that to be medium, right? And now it's given me multi-line suggestions. So it's saying, well, this is medium, then finish your project is probably high and core mom is low. Realistically, calling mom should be higher, I think, than buy groceries. But for, the, for this example, it's fine. We'll hit tab. And then, it's, notice how it's trying to tell me down here to tab, to add the priority here. So if I tab down to where it needs to be, tab again, it adds the priority to the to-do list. And now we can see in gray text which ones are a priority and which ones are not. Um, and that's pretty much everything you need to know about cursor to get started, cursor tab to get started. We could obviously do a little bit of styling on the form perhaps. It's not necessarily needed. What could we do? Let's let's add a let's just do space. Look, it's gonna start adding classes for us here. Maybe we want to add some classes here. Okay, that's adding some extra sizzle and it wants me to tab to here. Uh, I'm just gonna literally go with its suggestions uh, and see what it what it recommends. That's got a class already. Uh, button does not have a class, but now it will. Okay, let's head back. Okay, uh, input the input in the form doesn't have anything. So let's, oh, ah, oh, it was literally about to do it. There you go. So just multi-line edit, input and button, both suggested. 
Whoa, that button's big. <laughs> Let's go back. Input does not need to be width full. Oh, save that and head back. Now we've got this add item and we're going to do cursor tab video. Enter that. Oh, priority is actually undefined. So now we need to go back and here, look, by default, we need to add a priority of medium. Okay. So we'll head back and we'll go record cursor tab video, enter it, and then we can click it because it's been done. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That covers all the features that you need to know about cursor tab. Give it a try, uh, play around with it. We've covered, like, it generates code for you. It's like GitHub Copilot on crack. Uh, you can do new suggestions where you just hit tab or edits where it gives you that diff window. You can do multi-line edit, which we've seen with the priorities and how it can, and the CSS classes and things like that. And what else did we do? Oh, it, how it can, oh, one thing I didn't show you actually is a smart rewrite, which is pretty cool. So it fixes your mistakes if you like, don't know, you make a typo or you just can't be bothered. You could just like right here in natural language, position this top left fixed, right? And then it's gonna suggest classes and it will just replace what I put with the actual Tailwind classes. I can save that, I can whiz back over and it's stuck it in the top left corner. It's obviously not what you would want in a real project, but uh, it, it picks up on typos, it picks up on natural language and tries to figure out and just with all the context, all this code is added to the LLM with any other files that might be open as well, uh, the file name, and it can infer a lot. And it's, it can sort of like fix areas that you have and just knows really what you want to do. And genuinely, I feel like this reads my mind sometimes. And that's smart rewrite. And obviously we saw how it can predict where the cursor needs to go to make new edits. So yeah, give it a shot. Let me know. And yeah, in the next video, I will cover the chat sidebar. Cheers.